Woods Perennial Album Review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Woods Prolific Brooklyn-based folk band. They've been at it for quite some time and they are truly one of my modern favorite bands. They are just a band that I've obsessed with over the years and I feel like their discography is a whole lot more consistent than people really pointed out to be, even if I was never that into uh, their early records like At Rear House or How to Survive in the Woods. I mean, I love me some freak folk, but that was just, I don't know, maybe a little too weird at times, even though it was kind of warm and inviting. For me, it was the Songs of Shame album that really brought me around to their sound and just made me completely enamored with their, with their very freakish, very psychedelic and weird, but also incredibly inviting uh, and friendly folk music. At Echo Lake remains probably my favorite album of theirs. I've always thought that Sun and Shade, while being incredibly dark and morbid at times, but also really light and beautiful, doesn't get enough credit. And for those of you looking for a good, you know, leaping in point to Woods' discography, I always recommend Ben Beyond. And with Light and Love, I, I thought brought the sort of experimentation and jam elements of their live show to the studio in a really tasteful way. Also, City Sun Eater and the River of Light uh, brought a psychedelic soul sound to their to their already great sound, uh, making for an incredibly consistent album. Yeah, for a long time things were so good with Woods, and then they dropped the Love Is Love album, which you know it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's easily their least compelling album in years. There are some times on this album where things just get a little too light and a little too fluffy, a little bit too hippie-ish, uh, even for me who loves that in their music. Uh, so much so that I kind of wrote them off for a while. I wasn't that excited for their last album. Yeah, the Strange to Explain album that came out in 2020. I don't know. I wasn't hyped for this album leading up to it, and uh, I'm an idiot because this was a serious return to form. This was one of their most human set of tunes today that is just so incredibly beautiful and emotional all while rain raining, very sunny and psychedelic at times. It was really, really good. Now, that leads me to their new album, Perennial. They've dropped a lot of singles up to this album, and I didn't really know where it was going. I, I didn't really feel like it had much, you know, the sounds that they were dealing with didn't seem to coincide with one another. I figured that I needed to listen to the album as a whole, and I certainly have thoughts. Let's get things, uh, you know, this out of the way right off the bat. This is far from a bad album, and when this is good, this is sort of a perfect late summer, early fall album to just leave on and take in, man. The Shed starts this album off, and it's a very pleasant intro. I love the warm atmosphere, the winding guitars, the playful synths. It's got this really nice, warm atmosphere that's super inviting. It's charming. It's got a lot of good vibes. It just puts a big old smile on my face. Even though it's all instrumental, a lot of tracks on here are. Between the past, for as far as a single goes, this scratches all the itches. This is Woods by the Books. It's just so hazy and warm and haunting. It ticks all the boxes in the Woods camp. I think it's probably the best track here. It just gives me that cozy feeling that their music has always given me. And Jeremy Earle's vocals for the time being just give me the chills. I love this track. Another side is a really great extended jam. You know, you're always going to find at least one on a Woods record. This record gives us a few, and this is a good one. It's moments like this where teaser tracks like this actually fit really nicely on this album. I love how wiry and weird and ghoulish it gets at times, too. But it's also super inviting, super hypnotic. And when the vocals come in halfway through, it's already locked in on a groove, and Woods just take it from there. White Winter Melody is another truly, completely instrumental track. It, there's, there's a lot of them on this album, and you know what? This is actually one of the best ones. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. When I initially heard it as a teaser, I, I didn't really understand it. I didn't know what they were going for. But amongst the very colorful bliss of this album, this track is at home. It's just so cozy, and I love the playful synths and the slide guitar. I mean, it's just the perfect track for sitting on your porch in the crisp autumn air and having a sip of a drink or two. It's great. Uh, my real issue with this album is uh, the midway slouch that it gets into halfway through this thing. It is rough. Sip of Happiness, this track is just plain boring. Lyrically, this sounds like, I, I don't know why this would exist, but like an AI wrote uh, a wood 
woods track and this was the result. I mean, we've been here. Th these lyrics seem very recycled. And Jeremy Earle, his vocals have gone from ghoulish and friendly to completely bored. This brings me back to some of the least interesting moments on Love is Love years ago. I mean, from a distance, it sounds nice. It sounds like a woods track. But if you look deeper, it's just so cookie cutter. Little Black Flowers, ever since this dropped as a teaser, I, I thought they were really phoning it in. This was easily my least favorite single. And my thoughts on it haven't changed. This is so entry level for Woods. It's way too sunny. It's way too light. It, Jeremy just sounds like he's about to fall asleep at any second. This track is boring. Day moving on, I have a lot of the same feelings on this track, even though it got my hopes up with some super campy synths. I mean, from a distance, it, it sounds nice. And it's probably not the worst track here. I actually really love Jeremy's vocals. But it doesn't progress. Not even close. This track just kind of starts... It puts it into a low gear and never gets out of it. It's kind of pathetic, honestly. And Double Dream, late in the album, is really not that good either. This track actually has a lot of great elements to it, like the slide guitar and the synths. Give me all that you got. It's everything else about this track that falls apart. It's just phoned in. Jeremy's vocals just aren't captivating. Lyrically, once again, we've been here. It's just a little too light for me. It just doesn't stick with me, and it's a shame. So while I expect personally a lot more just because of the band's consistency over the years, there's certainly still lots of love here. Like The Wind Again, I love how breezy and airy this track comes off. The whistling in the background has a really nice touch to it, and just how left field and weird this track gets is just really nice. It's another completely instrumental track, uh, which I didn't expect to hear as many of, but it's warm, it's inviting, it's colorful, it's nice. And Weep, as far as a slightly more upbeat tune, hits all the boxes. Honestly, this track is airy, it's got a little confidence to it, it's great. Not only that, but Jeremy's vocals and delivery on this track are easily some of his most compelling contributions on this entire album. I'd argue that it's the most immediate track here, and when it opens up for this chorus, it is nothing but sheer euphoria. And Perennial, as a finale here, is yet another completely instrumental tune. Don't have an issue with it, though. It's actually a really short, sweet finale that wraps up this album nicely. It's one of the weirdest, most formless, and easily the most psychedelic thing here. Between the wailing slide guitars and this completely washed-out atmosphere, it's certainly something I didn't expect to hear, uh, but it's a really nice finale. This album... It's a toughie, because there's certainly a lot to like here, but as far as the consistency goes, this is not up to the Woods standard. I mean, I'm just for one shocked there's so many instrumental tracks on here, but I'm even more shocked by just how boring and phoned in it gets at the halfway point. Yes, they recover nicely and end the album on a good note, but this is not nearly as consistent as where they've been, because if you look through their discography, that's the name of the game consistency. They've always had like a level, a bar that it's just been constant at. And I'm not feeling it this time around. And that stinks. But for now, I'm feeling a very strong six on this album. But let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.